When the oh, bond, I do think we're going a little lower. When the bond market got it right. Do you remember when the bond market got it right, Tony? <laughs> no, because I'm the world's worst bond trader. So I don't remember when bonds get it right. Bonds got it right. Um, bonds got it right in 2025. TLT is roughly flat. Bonds got it right this year? So far. Here's what we're going to show you. Because everybody said, because the reason we're doing this is because everybody's like, well, you know, how do you know that bonds got it right? Like, like you know, the Fed's supposed to cut rates, but they haven't cut rates. And, you know, how do you know bonds got it right? So we're going to use TLT instead of ZB because a lot more people can trade TLT. Even though ZB is, is a better bond um, product, TLT, anybody can trade it. It's smaller. It's about 1 eleventh, one twelfth the size. So 100 shares of TLT is about one twelfth the size of a TL, of a bond contract. Yeah, TLT it's is, more of a 20-year, not a 30-year. I mean, what bond we're talking about? Yeah, but it's shorter it's term, same. longer term. They track. They track. They, they track each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. TLT is roughly flat. Not perfectly. For it's a 20-year. I know, but the actual basket of bonds is mostly 20s. So, so TLT is roughly flat for 2025. I've been falling about 1.4 percent after long-term yields jumped to 4.79 in mid-January and retreated to the low four range um, on softer data. A sharp April sell-off amid recession jitters was followed by um, stabilization as markets priced in, rates cuts in to their bond prices. So how expected was this move based on observed implied volatility from earlier this year? How expected was this move? Well, since we titled this when the bonds got it right, I'm going to say pretty damn expected. <laughs> let's, no fair, you peaked. Let's go to the next slide. So we did a study. We looked at uh, the entire year, 2025 to present. We looked at the price changes, the daily implied volatility, the 30-day historical volatility. The implied volatility is what's expected. The historical volatility is what actually happened. The implied volatility should be higher than the historical volatility because what's expected to happen should always be a little bit higher than what actually happens. We computed the percentage of time in 2025 that realized price moves in TLT were within the expectation given by implied volatility. So that's IV minus HV equals overstatement. What do you think it was? How often do you think that prices are in line? On a percentage basis? Yeah. TLT prices. How how right do you think they were? Almost 80%. Okay. I'm I'm guessing that you're probably going to be pretty damn close. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at the next NASDAQ slide. NASDAQ down two. As we're told. It's kind of a crash. You missed that on Friday, I know. Yeah. Um for most for most of 2025, TLT's implied volatility sits well above its realized volatility. In fact, here's crazy. You said 80%. Its IV exceeded historical 95% of the time in 2025. More That's a ridiculous than, number, by the way. More than I would have thought. Yeah, yeah well, more than anybody would have thought. 95% mm -hmm. um, of the time, to get implied volatility over historical volatility 95% of the time, that's rare for anybody who prices volatility in any product. Usually, it's somewhere around... 80 to 85%. 95% is right, which means that for all the chatter about bonds and everything all year, bonds have been priced like to freaking perfection. Mm -hmm. That's why we say when the bonds prices got it right. Um, let's go to the next slide. So the high overstatement rate may be hard to believe because bonds have traded lower for most of 2025. However, when taking into consideration the size of implied volatility relative to the seemingly large moves, we see that the average weekly move in TLT up or down was 1.8%, while the expectations were around 2.5%. Now, again, we use TLT here, but the bonds are going to be virtually the exact same. So there's on the first column, it's the expectation for the weekly moves based on monthly implied volatility. We always use the 30-day. Mm -hmm. And then the reality um, for the average weekly moves based on historical volatility, what actually happened. Again, so sad enough, why can't I make any money in TLT? 
You're just not a good trader. I mean, bonds have been our best trade of the year. Your best trade of the year because you've been trading them directionally, and every time they go lower, you've been buying them. And they've gone nowhere all, all year long. They're basically the same price as the beginning well, of the year. if you sold premium in TLT, you should be fine. Well, according to these statements, you, you should be, yeah. But it's very – I'm going to give you my answer. 15% monthly implied volatility is your answer. That's your TLT. Answer. You have so to have I'm, a direct I have not bias. looked at my TLT. I've had short premium on in TLT the entire year. Mm -hmm. Small, but I've had short premium on a whole year. I've not looked at my P&L once in TLT. I just looked at it, and it— I can validate it if, you, if you're going to lie here. Don't lie. It, it My P&L is very good, and it represents exactly what it says here because it hasn't moved all year. Any If, you ta if you're trading tasty methodology and you have 95% implied over historical— You should make money. You should make money. If you didn't make money, you do Well, you do wrong. stink. So if you didn't make money until T, you stink. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Okay, because 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 it it has it has worked. That's it. Yeah, TLT hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've had no direction on in TLT. It should have been pure. Yeah, you little no. pretty short. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go to the next slide. With the current thirty-day expected range for TLT, we see a four percent expected move. Over the last year, 88% of the 30-day moves saw a price move smaller than 4%. It's a good starting point. It's a really interesting number, actually. So, while TLT's downward pressure might initially spike implied volatility during periods of uncertainty, sustained directional moves typically lead to volatility compression as the trend becomes predictable, which is exactly what we've observed since April of 2025. In reality, TLT's implied volatility has been larger than its daily historical volatility. Implied is what is what's predicted to happen, and historical is what actually happened. Roughly 95% of this year. This means the velocity of actual moves on a weekly and monthly basis in TLT was smaller or in line with what the market was anticipating. Hence the reason for a positive PL in there. Hence the reason when the bond market got it right, which is Pretty rare for bonds, actually. <laughs> um, but this year so far, it's been so far so good. If you're not subscribed, subscribe right here. And if you want to meet me and the team in person at our next live event, hit the link at the top of the description.